yoked to Christ, yoked to Peter. We believe that in Scripture, Jesus Christ yokes himself to Peter in a very special and unique way. Hi, I am Ryan Zell. Let's explore several scenes in Scripture which point to Peter as someone Christ Jesus prepares for the mission he sets before him. Out of all the disciples of Jesus, he chooses 12 to be apostles, and out of those 12, he chose one. Before we start, we believe that Scripture is the infallible Word of God. It is therefore true that there are no accidents in Scripture, there are no coincidences in Scripture, there are no inadvertently placed words or scenes in Scripture. With that said, let's see where Jesus specifically yokes himself to Peter. Going to Scripture, Matthew 17, 24 to 27, here in this scene we have only Jesus and Peter and nobody else. Specifically in verse 27, and I will read it. However, not to give offense to them, go to the sea and cast a hook, and take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you will find a shekel. Take that and give it to them for me and for yourself. Does Jesus pay the temple tax for the other apostles? No, only for Peter this is done. Again, there are no coincidences in Scripture. Matthew 8, 5 to 13. In this scene, several things are occurring at once. We will focus on how Jesus yokes himself once again to Peter. Here Jesus says in verse 7, I will come and heal him. Jews did not go to the homes of Gentiles. But here Jesus says he will go to the centurion's home to heal the servant. In this well-known scene, the centurion displays something that made Jesus marvel. He displays faith and humility. Lord, I am unworthy to have you come under my roof. But the next scene, we see something that is linked to this scene. Jesus doesn't enter the home of the centurion. But in this scene, he enters the house of Peter, where he ultimately will make his home. Many of you will be tempted to claim that this is a coincidence. Again, there are no coincidences in Scripture. Everything has meaning. And verse 14, and when Jesus entered Peter's house. It is Peter's house where Jesus will ultimately make his home. Let us examine some scripture where Jesus does appoint Peter to not only be the holder of the keys of the kingdom of heaven, but to also be the shepherd of his flock until he comes again. Wait a minute, Zell. No way. Jesus is our shepherd, not Peter. Yes, he is, but he is also sitting at the right hand of God, awaiting his enemies to be made a footstool. And Jesus left us a church, and I might say, one church, not churches, and not a Bible to guide us into all truth, at least according to my Bible. Here's a comment made by a frequent commenter at the Zell Challenge channel. Thank you for admitting, as Augustine did, that Jesus built his church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, as we read in Revelation. Sorry, that was Ephesians. And not on a weak foundation such as Peter, the man. Let's look at this comment very, very closely. I have put the link here so you can go and examine exactly what was said. Why Peter? I've asked myself, as Mojo has asked, why would Jesus yoke himself to such a weak man as Peter? As I mentioned earlier, out of all Jesus' disciples, he chose 12 to be apostles. And out of these 12, he chose one. It can only be said that Jesus knows that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. When God gives you a task, he also gives you the grace to accomplish that task. A weak man as Peter, but no attempt is made to hide his weaknesses. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Peter is given the grace to become the chief of the apostles, to carry those keys, to tend, to feed, and to shepherd his sheep and lambs. We addressed who Jesus Christ gives the keys of the kingdom of heaven to in our video, Keys of the Kingdom, and Who Has Them. Many have to deny that Jesus gave the keys of the kingdom of heaven to Peter because they are not members of the sheepfold that Jesus entrusts to Peter in John 21, 15 to 17. 
let's look at this interlocutor's assertion that, and not on such a weak foundation as Peter the man. Well, this is what I would say if I was outside the true church looking in. This assertion that Peter is a weak man really must be looked at in light of his entire life. The church does not deny that Peter was a weak man. If they did, they would not have chosen gospels that showed this. So to answer Mojo's comment of why Jesus would choose such a weak man as Peter, we already asked, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. But is Peter a weak man after the ascension? I think not. In fact, this weak man who was beaten, scourged, spit upon over and over again, thought himself unworthy to even be crucified in the same manner as his Lord and Savior. This, my friends, is a strength not found in many Christ followers. This weak man who is given the keys and is entrusted by Christ himself to tend, to feed, and to shepherd his sheep and lambs in front of ten witnesses is also a martyr for his faith. It is not me who says that Christ has yoked himself to Peter, but it is the Holy Spirit speaking through the scriptures, and it is history and the infant church who claims it. The church we call Catholic was established by Christ, and you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, not churches. Matthew 16 does not prove it. Matthew 16, 13 to 20 confirms it. The church was in existence for about 25 years before Matthew ever put a pen to his parchment. This weak man on his Simon called Kephas is the rock upon which the church we call Catholic is built. That church is still here and it is weathered every storm and assault thrown at it. Jesus says to us, you heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you love me, you will have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. In John 21, 15 to 17, Christ himself entrusts Peter to tend, to feed, and to shepherd his sheep and lambs until he comes again. And here in 1 Peter 5, 4, we have Peter saying, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Which sheepfold do you belong to? St. Peter's or somebody else's?